Hello, my name is Brent Ramsey, Technical Advisor for Cinema Products at Canon USA. Ever since the EOS 5D Mark II was introduced, when full HD shooting was first made possible on an SLR camera, the 5D camera and EOS movie have become essential assets in video productions for everything from YouTube uploads to Hollywood blockbusters, right? Now, with this new model, the much anticipated EOS 5D Mark IV, video shooting inherits not only the 5D tradition, but incorporates many of the best video features from the latest EOS models and integrates those into its design and operations like no other model today. Now in this overview, I'll get into how the 5D Mark IV captures video and we'll look closer at its significant video functions and feature upgrades over its predecessor, the 5D Mark III. The 5D Mark IV has 30.4 million effective pixels on its full frame sensor. Now that's approximately 36 by 24 millimeters and it uses a single digit 6 plus image processor. The newly developed sensor not only contains more pixels, but has been improved from the 5D Mark III with new photodiode construction and new color filters. Okay, for deliverables, as you may have been expecting, the 5D Mark IV shoots 4K video at up to 30 frames per second and Full HD up to 60p. Also, it includes a high frame rate recording mode of 120 frames per second at 720p, a first for the 5D series. And this adds to the flexibility of EOS movies. Now, the Digic 6 Plus processor includes new noise reduction processing, and this enables higher sensitivity. For video, the normal ISO speed settings are 100 to 25,600 for Full HD and 100 to 12,800 for 4K. And ISO settings are expandable up to 102,400. Now, by the way, just so you know, we're shooting this video in 4K for a 1080 finish with a 5D Mark IV right now. Now, here's a feature I know you're going to really love. The 5D Mark IV has an advanced LCD monitor with full touchscreen control. Touch the screen to make menu settings, to find where you want the AF system to focus, play back images, or pinch or expand as on a smartphone to zoom in or back off from a playback image. The touchscreen interface seriously improves operability and should make shooting movies with the 5D Mark IV a smoother process and easier to adjust on the fly than before. With the touchscreen, you can select sensitivity of the touch or turn it off altogether to prevent accidental changes. The LCD has approximately 1.62 million dots, a much improved resolution over the 5D Mark III. It's made of reinforced glass, it's scratch and smudge resistant, and it has an anti-glare coating. Now, focus. I think we can all agree that no single camera function is more important than focus acquisition. And this is especially true when you're shooting 4K, mainly because critical focus is simply more noticeable at higher resolution. Canon has revolutionized DSLR video recording with dual pixel CMOS AF technology. It's smooth, positive, and adjustable autofocus that's designed for natural looking video results. And of course, that's with a full frame sensor. So you're going to see incredible shallow depth of field control. So you can expect reliable and natural continuous focus control with all autofocus capable EF lenses. And with the 5D Mark IV CMOS having a higher sensitivity, the focusing capability limit in low light focus performance is enhanced. All right, here's a look at some of the AF options you have when recording video with the 5D Mark IV. First, you can set dual pixel CMOS AF to continuously focus on moving subjects with Movie Servo AF. It's easily activated in the shooting menu once the camera is set to video recording mode. Once you set it, focus is continually active. You don't need to press a button to start AF. If you do press either the shutter button or the rear AF on button, you'll momentarily lock the continuous focus. And what's especially cool about this continuous movie servo AF is how you can customize it. You can speed up or slow down its operation. And there's a separate AF tracking sensitivity adjustment to define its response to sudden changes in what you're focusing on. Now I'll discuss these in more detail in a few moments. 
turn Movie Servo AF off in the menu. Now you define when the camera focuses. By pressing either the shutter button or AF on button, focus will lock once the camera confirms focus. You can quickly refocus on new subjects even during actual recording. Beyond that, you can define how the AF system will read your subject. The AF method menu is where you choose the AF options. Face plus tracking is the default setting. And if faces are detected, it puts sharp focus on the most prominent face in the scene. Face detection not only focuses on a face, but also can continue to follow that face if it moves around the frame. When no faces are detected, the camera instead resorts to the Flexi Zone Multi autofocusing option, then back to Face AF when it recognizes a face again. The setting also works for subject tracking. Tap the screen to select and follow a subject. There's also Flexi Zone Multi AF. With this setting, the camera focuses over a wide area, covering about 80% of the total scene. By default, the camera will put sharpest focus on the nearest subjects having adequate detail or texture. With Movie Servo AF active, it does this continuously, even if you move the camera or the subject moves. And even though FlexiZone Multi AF initially covers most of the total scene, you can quickly isolate focus by just touching the desired area of the screen you'll see a much smaller white border defining the area now being covered. Go back to full coverage by touching an on-screen return icon. For even more precise control though, you'll want FlexiZone Single AF. This AF method lets you work with a small area for autofocus. Instead of initially using most of the image area, it makes the most out of the EOS 5D Mark IV's touchscreen technology. Just touch the screen to identify where you want the sharpest focus to be. And you can drag the focus target box around using just your finger. With this setting, you can also adjust AF sensitivity and AF tracking sensitivity, which makes it the best setting for customizing focus shifts for a shot. If you want the focus shift to be super quick or roll in slow, well, there's 10 settings for that. AF tracking sensitivity response settings determine the focus transition speed for when your subject moves from the active AF point. Or in other words, how fast it grabs focus onto something else, or someone crossing the frame, for instance. There are seven transition speeds available. Maybe you just want to stay in manual focus. Well, you can always use magnification in two stages up to 10x, and it includes a cool touchscreen look around feature, making it easy to check critical focus and keep shooting. There are many ways to control, pause, and lock focus using custom controls and the camera's buttons. I'll just show you my favorite, which basically is exactly like the Cinema EOS AF lock camera operation. And that's using either the set button or the servo AF icon on the LCD screen to pause with basically lock autofocus. So check out the other options. Focus control is totally in your hands with the 5D Mark IV. Let's look closer at the 4K video capabilities of the 5D Mark IV. First, it shoots DCI 4K, which is 4096 by 2160 or 17 by 9 high resolution video at 2398, 24, and 2997 for NTSC. The 4K files are recorded as motion JPEG. As a side note, the 1DX Mark II and 1DC have a different pixel size than the 5D Mark IV. So the 4K field of view will be different on the 5D Mark IV than those two cameras, even if they're all shot at the same focal. The 4K movie area is 4096 by 2160, and this is recorded off exactly this area within the full image sensor. So, as with the EOS 1DX Mark II, when you record 4K video, you're in effect cropping the full frame view. The 4K crop factor is equivalent to that of a lens with approximately 1.74 times the indicated focal length. Shooting 4K will be similar to what you see 
while shooting on an APS-C sensor size camera like a 7D Mark II, for instance. A 50 millimeter lens in full HD video mode would roughly equate out to an 85 millimeter in 4K. Now, Full HD 1080p video remains a very important recording media for many camera operators. The 5D Mark IV shoots MPEG-4 AVCH-264 Full HD 1920x1080 video at 2398-2997p, which is the same as the 5D Mark III was, but it adds true 24p and 60p. And now you can shoot in either MP4, which is another first for the 5D series, or the .mov format. All I, IPB, and IPB light compression methods are available. And finally, it includes that HD high frame rate movie mode of 120p at 720. The equivalent PAL frame rates are available as well. Additionally, just like we saw in the 1DX Mark II, a 4K frame grab capture function is now included, making it possible to select the exact micro moments you want from 4K movies and obtain approximately 8.8 .8 megapixel JPEG still images directly in camera. Okay, now let me just stop and get into this a little further because I think it's an especially important video feature for still shooters. 4K video shooting is giving you the extra option of 30 frames per second still capture by letting you go back into the 4K video, shuttling or scrolling through the footage frame by frame and selecting the exact payoff frame in the sequence. Now you can do this with the clarity of a super fast shutter speed as well, up to 1 4,000th of a second. The results are amazing. JPEG frame grabs are relatively small files at about 2.7 megabytes, and that's 8.8 .8 million pixels and 4096 by 2160 in size. And they're fast and simple to share right from the camera with the Canon Camera Connect app. Now that's possible because, yes, the 5D Mark IV includes a built-in Wi-Fi. And this is not just for image sharing, but remote control over autofocus the camera's shutter, aperture, ISO, and movie record settings, and movie recording start-stop. If you shoot an MP4, then you also have the additional option to transfer movies via Wi-Fi to your smartphone and send them out from there. The 5D Mark IV uses one CF card. Now, Type 1 and UDMA7 are supported, and there's one SD card slot you're especially going to want to use the UDMA7 card for 4K video capture. Now, here's the deal with these cards. 4K video requires cards capable of maintaining sustained write speeds, which is not always the write speed printed on the card, which may be the peak write speed. So be sure you research your card purchase. The 5D Mark IV also includes time-lapse movie functions. Choose from intervals of 1 second to 99 hours and from 2 to 3600 frames in duration. The display shows you the shooting time required to complete the sequence you set up and the playback duration of the finished shot. Now, similar to interval recording in a Cinema EOS camera, time lapse movies are assembled in camera and ready to use, producing a finished 1920 by 1080 movie. HDR movie shooting has also been added. Now this is a cool feature that we've seen in other EOS models, but it's now included in the 5D Mark IV. Available for full HD only, it's a multiple exposure process that records alternate frames of normal exposure and underexposure, shot at 50 or 60 frames per second, and then combines the two bracketed images into a single frame, resulting in either a 25 or 2997 frame per second sequence. And it will come in especially handy for smoothing out high contrast scenes. One last thing. The 5D Mark IV is built to work through harsh conditions. Each component has been revised from the 5D Mark III, making it lighter than the 5D Mark III by about 60 grams. But it features improved dust proof and drip proof performance. It's sealed much like the 7D Mark II, and at significantly more points than the 5D Mark III. It's built to keep you working. 
Okay, there are way too many things about this camera that I've just got to skip for now, but that gives you the opportunity to explore them yourself. I'm Brent Ramsey. Thanks for watching.